Hello and thank you for watching. This is STSC back again with LEGO Transformers G1 Optimus Prime. This build might be a bit of a surprise to a lot of you. These days I don't really build a lot of G1 Transformers, and what I do build is usually at a much smaller scale, usually about four wide for vehicles like this. But not that long ago, the majority of what I built was actually at this kind of scale, which is what I'd consider about minifigure scale, give or take. It was when I started doing weekly uploads that I shifted back to doing smaller scale stuff, because it's just more sustainable. But recently I was interested in trying out the larger scale again, and I decided to make my first project a new G1 Optimus Prime. Right up front, I want to assure you that you don't need to worry, these larger scale builds will not be replacing the usual small scale builds you expect from me. They'll coexist, but there will be more of these larger ones. I've already built multiple, and quite frankly, I'm really enjoying it. So you can expect to see more, but don't worry, you'll still see small scale stuff too. With the preamble out of the way, we can actually look at the build now. And I have to say, I'm really happy with how this truck mode turned out. It is a little bit patchy here and there. There's some gaps and it's not perfect, but I think all around, it just looks really nice. I'm very happy that there's actually a back wall on the cab. That's something I always struggled with. And yes, you can kind of see the head poking out just a little bit there. It's not nearly as egregious as past attempts have been. Taking a look from above, you can see there are some kind of ugly anti-studs up here on the roof, but they're necessary for the transformation. I've added some of these bar stud pieces here to represent the lights he has on the top of the cab. These are actually kind of necessary based on how he's built. If they weren't there, there'd kind of have to be these studs here, and I felt like that would be pretty ugly. And then I realized that was kind of the perfect place to be able to add in these little details, which... I actually never added in on any of my previous attempts to build G1 Optimus. And I think they look pretty decent, and they represent the detail pretty well. And of course, by now you've probably noticed that he has kind of feet hanging out back here. Usually the feet of Optimus Prime end up hanging out the back of the truck, but this time around they're kind of up here on the front. I think it helps kind of clean up the silhouette a bit, and I think it looks better than having them hang out back here. You've also probably noticed that <laughs> this is a little bit floppy. Unfortunately, the legs don't peg in together, so it's a little bit of a mess. Of course, when he's on the ground, it really isn't a problem. They're going to stay there. It's not like gravity is going to pull them down. But it would have been ideal to have them pegged together. But unfortunately, with how he transforms, there isn't really room to fit a peg in there. At least not one I'd be happy with. Returning to the front of the truck, I just wanted to point out that the windows here are at a bit of an angle. This is for the robot mode, but in truck mode, they really probably should be more flat. But adding in a joint like that would have made it a lot more finicky, and I decided to prioritize solidity. Opening them up, you can see that there's these kind of cheese grater slopes here, which makes it really simple to get them aligned. And I just didn't want to play around with transformation joints. That would have made it a lot more finicky to try and get the windows in place. And if anyone's interested, this is what the bottom of the truck looks like. For size comparison, here we have Optimus with a minifigure. He is intended to scale with minifigures, and personally, I think he looks great with one. Since this is the first of my new minifigure scale builds, I figured I'd compare him to one of my usual smaller builds. Specifically, my last version of Optimus Prime. So you can see how he stacks up to my usual scale. That's all there is to say about Optimus in truck mode, so now it's time to transform.
And here we have Optimus Prime in his robot mode, which I think is the mode where he really shines. I tried to go for cartoon accuracy in terms of color and details. You can see I've given him white thighs and a white waist, and I've removed the wheels from his legs. But I didn't try too hard to follow the exact proportions of the show model. Instead, I just tried to go for what I felt looked the best, and in the end, I think I found a pretty happy medium between a cool action figure and decent screen accuracy. I'm really happy with the amount of detail I was able to fit into his head design while keeping it relatively simple and clean looking. You can see he's got a very well-defined faceplate here. He's got the little brim actually above his eyes that Prime usually has. He's got the little crest and the two ears. The eyes here are represented by this gray stud that could get swapped out for a blue stud, but personally I like the subtlety of the gray stud here and I don't really mind that there's no distinct eyes. Nearly every G1 Optimus Prime I've ever built has used the bumpers to form the little gray parts of his flanks. But this is easily the most simple and intuitive way I've been able to get this transformation to work. And it's just super fun. I really enjoyed that step of the transformation. And it's very durable and easy. And it actually kind of clicks in place a little. You can see there were these studs here on the bumper. And while they don't actually stud into the chest, they do just somewhat lock in place and they help to friction it in there so that his chest doesn't just flop around. The only issue is that the wheels are kind of visible here. They aren't perfectly hidden. I think it's decent enough. These are pretty big wheels to try and hide without hollowing this out and in the end I think this is a decent fix and I'm happy with it. Now I mentioned earlier that I made his thighs and waist white for cartoon accuracy. But the cartoon model also has the grill as white. In fact, it has the grill and the bumper. And that's the reason why I made it gray, because the bumper had to form the gray sections here. And I felt like it would just be awkward having a white grill and a gray bumper. So I prioritized the matching in vehicle mode. On the legs, I went for the cartoon accurate blue vents instead of gray. And like I mentioned earlier, I have the wheels fold away. Turning them around, you can see that the wheels do poke out the back a little, but I don't really care about the back, and as long as you can't see them from the front, I think that's all that matters, really. For size comparison, here we have Optimus with a minifigure. And here we have him with my Rise of the Beasts Optimus. I've built one accessory for Prime, and it's his iconic Ion Blaster. In the place of a handle, it has a basic stud so that it can peg into his hands. For articulation, Prime's head can look left and right, as well as up and down. The shoulders can easily swing forward and backwards, but outward movement is a little bit more interesting. This panel here moves for transformation, and you can see under there there's actually a pivot point. So, if you bring that out of the way, the arm can swing up. Of course, it does look a little awkward if you swing it out this far, so usually I kind of try and use it tastefully like that. Then there's a second outward joint here at the bicep, which can pretty much allow him to do a full T-spread. Then there's a bicep swivel, the transformation elbow, which is very, very tight and I don't usually use in robot mode. The actual elbow joint underneath that, which also has a little bit of swivel. And the hand itself can pivot inwards and downwards. One last bit of arm articulation, which I was really happy to squeeze in, is actually a butterfly joint. You can see here that this section is able to move outwards. It actually brings the light with it, so as you turn it, you kind of have to turn the light back out. But this can come outwards, and then that allows him to swing his arm forward across his chest. It's actually a happy accident and a byproduct of how it's constructed, but once I noticed it was there, I was just super happy. The hips have a really interesting articulation system which allows for the waist to be very simplistic and blocky without getting in the way of the articulation. Usually you have to have some kind of skirt flap that flips up to get out of the way of leg movement, but instead the joint itself actually pulls down like this. And once it's down it can kick forward, and if it goes even further it can kick even higher and Prime can do high kicks. It's a really fun system which I really enjoy and I actually kind of stole from early SH Figure Arts designs. The only problem is that it's a single bar which can be kind of loose. I actually sharpie this bar which increases friction, though of course it's non-purist. 
Prime has a basic knee bend, which with a little bit of finagling can get about 90 degrees of bend, but it can also kind of be cheated by engaging the second joint here, and then you can get a much easier 90 degrees, though that looks kind of awkward in my opinion. It's really probably the most limited part of his articulation, unfortunately. But there is a swivel there above the knee, which allows for effectively a thigh swivel, and the foot is attached by a ball joint, which allows for it to pivot and rotate. Optimus has some pretty good articulation, which allows him to pull off some very dynamic poses. My only problem is how limited the knees are. I really wish they could bend 90 degrees easier, and I think it's really his one major issue. So maybe that's something I can look into on a potential version too. But that's all for now, so I'll see you next time.